name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I welcome you all in this morning worship service. Let us worship God. God is Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The Lord is near to all who call on him name, to all who call on him in truth. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God the Father, who created all things by your power and wisdom, and loved the world so as to give your Son to be our Savior. Praise be to you, O God the Son, who was made human life as I have seen all things except sin, and was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Praise be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who does lead us into all truth and does set abroad the love of God in our hearts. All praise and glory be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Now let us sing the hymn number one. The hymn number one, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Hymn number one.
let's remain standing for the responsive reading. Today's responsive reading is taken from Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Be gracious to me, O God, for people trample on me all day long, foes oppress me. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. All day long, they seek to injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Do not deliver them for any reason. In wrath, cause down the peoples, O oh God. Then my enemies will retreat in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. In God I trust. I am not afraid. What can a mere mortal do to me? For you have delivered my soul from death and my feet from falling so that I may walk before God in the light of life. Remain standing. Please turn page number 50 of CSA Book of Common Worship. Page number 50. Confession. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. If you do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us kneel down and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done, and we have done those things which we should not have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Miserable offenders, spare them, O God, who confess their faults. Restore them that are penitent according to your promises declared to humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful God, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and just life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today our chief guest is the Reverend Dr. Christopher Yes Raj, retired presbyter, the Cathedral Church of the Redemption. Diocese of Delhi, Church of North India. 
on behalf of the congregation the church committee and the pastors i welcome you in this morning english worship service now we will listen to a special song by our english sunday school then we will listen to the word of god right after that our chief guest will deliver lord's message to us
The Old Testament reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 22, 12 to 23. 1 Samuel chapter 22, 12 to 23. And Saul said, Here now, son of Ahitab. He answered, Here I am, my Lord. Then Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword, and you have incurred of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as it is this day? So Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who among all your servants is as faithful as David? Who is the king's son-in-law, who goes at your bidding and is honorable in your house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Far be it for me. Let not the king impute anything of a servant or to any in the house of my father. For your servant knew nothing of all this, little or much. And the king said, You shall surely die. Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. Then the king said to the guards who stood about him, Turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not tell it to me. But the servants of the king did not lift their hands to strike the priest of the Lord. And the king said to Jog, You turn and kill the priest. So Jog, the Edomite, turned and struck the priest and killed on that day 85 men who wore a linen effort. Also Nob, the city of priests, he struck with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and nursing infants, oxen and donkeys and sheep with the age of the sword. And now one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar told David that Saul had killed the Lord's priest. So David said to Abiathar, I knew that day when Jehoah the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul. I have caused the death of all the persons of your father's house. Stay with me, do not fear, for he who seeks my life seeks your life. But with me, you shall be safe. The Old Testament reading is done. Glory be to God. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from the epistle of Paul. The Apostle to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 11 to 18. Galatians, chapter 6, verses 11 to 18. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hands. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Here ends the epistle reading. Praise be to your Christ. I request the congregation to stand for the gospel reading. The gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 21, verses, 21 uh, verses 15 to 19. I repeat, John, chapter 21, verses 15 to 19.
So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Here ends the gospel reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as you sit in this historic church this morning. I thank God for giving me the opportunity to speak this morning a message that Jesus loves. Peter, do you love? I'm also grateful to Dr. Reverend Dr. Christopher, president of, of this church, and the team of pastors with whom they have admitted me to worship with. Finally, I'd like to thank my friend Jacob Daniel, who asked me to speak this morning. May God bless him in his ministry in this church. Let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak to you and through your message, speak to your believers. We are grateful to you that we all could come this morning and participate in worship and hear the word of God. Now as we sit together, O oh Lord, touch thy servant Help me to speak the words that you want to be spoken this morning. Encourage me to have the word of God expressed, carrying your message for all of us and meaningful to us, both in faith and belief. In the name of Jesus, we seek this prayer. Amen. Friends, uh, this morning, the theme given for me to speak is a Dane ministry marked by the wounds of Christ. Adain ministry is a Christian reference, biblical reference. It is religious, it has the religious con connotation and it has related to religious activities. Maybe very interesting to know as I was preparing the word Adain appears only in the James version the first James version of 
the bible translation rest of the 30 times it appears but surprising when you when most of us do not consult the james they go to new james they go to american bible and niv and also new english all these bibles some of the other i don't know why translated and removed this ordain and they have included putting new words a point set apart choose and to decide i don't know the translators may have their own but i think the word ordain has a meaningful and religious connotation it has the aura of god choosing appointment is made by as we see in this world by various institutions but we need apart from the institution of church we need god's blessing on each person who want to serve the lord according to this passage his sheep feed my sheep he says that is it friends second thing that and uh, in timothy 1 timothy king james version i am ordained as a preacher apostle and teacher to gentile this is how the whole thing is put teaching and preaching the second aspect that i like to focus today on to make the clarity of ministry the lord jesus has explained what ministry should be for he says in matthew chapter 20 28 i have come not to be served but to serve not to be served but to serve that's the important ministry adain ministry has the component and various basic principle of serving others as we see in the ministry various institution round in the secular world you have finance ministry you have home ministry you have science and technology various ministries they are also subject to serve but here the lord calls us to serve his people jesus says feed my lamb feed my people adain ministry as we see is for that purpose and when i look at the great theologians like john calvin he says this ministry you know no man steadily preserves and discharge ministry no man can discharge ministry he says without the love of christ reigning in his heart without the love of christ reigning in his heart this is the basic that Calvin in 1536 very old catholic priest brought the message to us and to see this morning this focus now as we move to this message and the gospel reading that was done john 21 19 the basic thing that emerges is jesus asking peter do you love me peter do you love me these are the words that we seek in the family circle sometime we catch hold of our little children do you love papa do you love mama do you love grandpa and that is and the words that they want from the children is yes papa i love you but here we are going to face a peter and peter is under examination and uh, one main difficulty with our english language is love for all the you know nuances of love all that you have related to love for example if you say <clears throat> love in terms of you know as we look as written verse nine times word love a curse same love but the same love when we look at greek translation scripture i'm sure all of us know that the bible was first written in greek 
and later translation into English language. So the Greek basis are very important to know what are this? Love, because Greek defines that love in a different words differently. And one of the great writers of theology and also lecturer in Oxford, C.S. Lewis, has also brought out a small book called Four Verses in the Bible, Greek Verses in the Bible, Four Greek Verses in the Bible. And this mere verses are agape, very familiar to us, agape. The word agape is appearing in the Lord asking Peter word which means unconditional love, perfect love, pure and sacrificial love. And the beautiful expression that we see is in this love is this agape love, the divine love. For God's word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes him will never, should not perish but have eternal life. Not perish. Believing in Jesus, not perish. That is the power that agape has, love. That he has shown in the cross. And that is his. The second word that uh, C.S. Lewis moves in, discusses storage. Story. Storage. Family love. Brotherly love. Parently love. Sisters love. Children's love. And it occurs only once. While agape occurs in the Bible, Bible 320 times. The significance of the word. So one, the question that we are going to examine, which the Lord Jesus was asking, was mainly agape based, only one change. The second, as we see, the love one another, brothers and sisters. And that is only occurs once. Then eros, sensual love, sexual love. That also occurs once in eros, once in the Bible in relation to husband and wife relation. Their married life together has been put in this context. So it may be love, but from the Greek translation you find that it is eros and Thirdly, philia, another important word which has love in the word of both Lord Jesus and Peter, but actually the translation, the Greek translation is philia, which means friendship love, friendship love. So you find, and the new commandment that I give to you, that you love one another. And just as I loved you, you also love one another. Poi moi, 11 times in Bible. It is not related to leper. love, but it has the adverb of shepherd, which is relevant to today's passage that we are focusing. Jesus told, as we move into this focusing, Jesus told his disciple, obeying God, and loving God are interdependent. Obeying God and loving God are interdependent. Without that, our relationship with God is not possible. That's what, love is a decision for pursuing relationship. Love is a decision for pursuing relationship. Love is a decision which our emotion appeals, emotions follow. And the beautiful expression of this which Jesus summarizes, this love is an expression of following relationship, is that the famous commandments, our Lord Israel, oh hear Israel, our Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the God with all your heart, with all your love, with all your mind, and with all your strength. See, the love of God needs very important aspect. Love of God needs, first we see heart. Is there in the heart, do we have the love of God? That's what 
the commandment makes it clear soul mind we may be thinking all the things in the world but do we have a place in this mind for our lord jesus and the strength strength is also important to know god and strength is holding us in one place strength is to you know determination yes i will understand and doubt god that is the determination so you move on as we see in the life of peter he had boldly proclaimed devotion to christ during the foot washing time episode he had said willing willing to die for jesus and his defense in the garden of gethsemane when the chief priest soldiers come and try to catch the peter killed and cut off the ear of one of the soldiers so you have bold public presentation people you have peter's devotion but as at the same time there is a dark side of peter denying jesus three times denying jesus three times so you find a complication in the life of people denying jesus now from here if we move into denying jesus is one component which happened before the lord jesus went to the cross died and resurrected now the component the passage that we are seeking we are working and devoting is after jesus resurrection and at that point the first day of resurrection he met the disciples on the first day itself second day and the whole episode that we are focusing now is the third time the lord said i will meet you after meeting second time in the context of thomas who said unless i see him i will not believe he is risen so he is meeting also making it possible for thomas to believe and he moved and said i will meet you again go to galilee and this is where is very important going to galilee peter finds himself time wasted he is waiting for jesus he is delayed so he said to the disciple let's go for fishing so this episode is very important because god feels this is disobey one point there is the question of denial and there is a question of disappointing and that's why he want to have dialogue with peter to rectify it is not punishing him and just throw him out of the figure <coughs> throw him out of his relation he want to meet him ask him question and that's where the first process of questioning begins and jesus asked peter do you love me do you love me against the background of two things deceiving christ you know denying christ and disobeying so the peter is worried see he is not clean so he said you know you find in the in this situation he says simon john this is one of the names simon given when peter met jesus before he became peter it is the peter who it is jesus who gave him name but before that was simon and the word that you find that question that is jesus asking peter is not appearing it says simon son of jo- jonah which indicates that you have gone back to your original activities away from god away from god that's what it is that's the message that jesus wanted to convey and it's very interesting that simon was able to note this change in his approach to him so far he has been calling him peter now suddenly simon son of john and then his whole reply also say see he says 
do you love me then jesus asked then all all these all these where do you see first thing all these it is not all these men i think it is all these means your boat and net and fish do you value it more than me that's it jesus means net boat and fish are you prepared to give it up we abandon all the former career do you love me enough to do that here it should be noted that jesus is speaking of ag- agape love the word ab- agape appears in jesus do you love me do you ab- agape we saw it is a greek word with more unconditional love nothing in rest that is our lord jesus agape love peter knows he cannot equate with him he cannot be same and then he says jesus he said to jesus yes lord you know that i love you but the word love that he used in the greek language as i said english has one word love for so many things philio 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 means brotherly love one level you have agape jesus another level you have brother, brotherly love that's how he felt that he can't come closer to the lord and then the second question that is because he said this yet jesus did not give him up jesus said okay feed my lamb in that answer when he said i can only be feel your love which is friendship love still jesus did not give up feed my lamb he allowing him to do what he has to do what he has chosen him to be do, doing the second question is that once again jesus asking do you love me simon son of john do you love me jesus uses the same word agape his love is agape are you in the same level he says lord i am not he goes on and repeats the word filio as i said once again it is the love that we saw is friendship love not am not agape but we see the lord says tend my sheep tend my sheep the english translation has made it tend t e n d look after my sheep but the actual when you go through the greek literature as we found was different it is poemo poemo no what it means is shepherd adjective word is shepherd shepherd my sheep how how the change takes place love sometime the activity that the lord ordained to them shepherd my sheep that is important because the lord is preparing him to be a shepherd him to be a good shepherd in john chapter 10 god said i am the good shepherd good shepherd sacrifices life for his sheep now he says peter you are going to be a shepherd shepherd my sheep what happens to jesus i was thinking jesus as he was ascending the heaven he is going to be a divine shepherd and now peter is going to be shepherd and the chief shepherd and we saw the chief shepherd and finally i would like to as i see the time i'm running out and i see it the third question the lord ask again do you love me very significantly we must note that this love is not agape his love asking do you love me is not it is filio he comes down okay you are a filio love which is a friendly love i accept it but then 
uh, Peter feels that he should also respond. And then he says that, my love, filio, love continues. And that's why he says, you know everything, yet my love is only filio. Friends, as we look at this, there has been a change in the Lord's approach to Jesus. He was not interested in condemning and ending, but he was interested in restoring and commissioning Jesus. Peter back to his position as the chief shepherd and which he became shepherd as we read Acts chapter 2 that he becomes a shepherd. Chief shepherd gives the message 3,000 people turn. Finally, I'd like to end up the question that Jesus is asking today. To you and me, do, I, do you love Jesus? Like Peter. You are, you are not Peter. We are lesser a person. We must have done fault and certain things, mistakes. Yet Jesus gives an opportunity for us to come to him. Deny her repent and change our relation and the next question I would like to is do you love Jesus dash 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 fill up the blank more than dash 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 more than what more than your money more than your house more than your cars do you love him more than that just an example that's it more than your position more than your degree that's the precise thing we need to change. Love for Jesus is first. When Jesus in your life, everything changes. He provides everything. So many things, you know, we feel that if we're more closer to Jesus, then we'll have to give up what all I have. But don't worry. When you are closer to Jesus, when you love Jesus and Jesus loves you, he will make it possible that you get jobs which you need not. Like Peter could not fish, no fish for him. When Jesus comes in his life, there is fish in his life. So I think that we can, although this message says, Peter, you are only a good shepherd for us. Leave your fishing as we sit here in the world in which we live qualified. God gives an opportunity to be in different position. But the basic question is, you be there, but don't forget Jesus. Your blessing will be more when you are with him. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us all stand and affirm our faith by saying the Apostle Creed, which is found on page number 56 in the CSA Book of Common Worship. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. While remain standing, let us all sing together the offertory hymn, hymn number 608. Take time to be holy, speak oft with thy Lord. Hymn number 608. <laughs>
Let us pray. Follow the prayer in page number 81 and 82 found in Book of Common Worship. For all Christian churches throughout the world that the love and peace shown in Christ Jesus may an animate them and flow through them into the world we pray. Come spirit of love, fill us with your power. For all the people of different faiths and beliefs in the world that they may be instruments of love, peace and unity among nations and a source of hope and strength for the suffering and oppressed we pray. For all those who have been marginalized in this world, those who have been deliberately and forcibly prevented the sharing in the goods of God's providence, that they may find hope and strength to transform God's creation, we pray. For all the women of the world who have been made victims of unjust wages, overwork, and various forms of harassment that they may demand and attain the equality due to the, ch due to the children of God, we pray. Come, come spirit of love, love comfort us. For all those who are suffering from character assassination, psychological stress, stress painful and terminal illness that they may find support and strength, we pray. For all pastors and social workers, for those who study and teach theology, that their labor may be grounded in commitment to the unity of the churches, love of neighbor, and concern for justice, we pray. Come, Spirit of love, encourage us. For those areas of our world where conflict and war rages that those working for peace and justice may not lose heart, we pray. Come, Spirit of us. For all martyrs, those who have laid down their lives for the sake of others and in struggle for a new way of life in the service of peace, for those who have died due to indifference, apathy, and corruption, that the dangerous memories of their death may inspire us to speak the truth powerfully, we pray. Come, Spirit of love, inspire us. To you, God, our parent, our source of life, we lift up these prayers and these hopes through him who have revealed and reality of divine love and possibility of human love, Jesus, our Lord, brother and friend, amen. Let us say Lord, uh, let us say Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, our and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. God, our rock and refuge, we thank you for the gift of the church. We praise you for the diverse ministries carried out through the body of Christ by the empowerment of God, the Holy Spirit. We pray that the ordained servants of yours be faithful and truthful to their commitment in their service to the congregation. Let these your servants be watchful to live as Christ lived so that they can be a good shepherd to their flock in guiding and guarding in all their endeavors. Let their ministry bring glory to your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. The Lord be with you. Let us depart in peace.